In the problems below, use the given information to find the p-value. I've numbered them 1, 2, and 3 because there are actually three problems that we have to work out here. They're three separate problems. Okay, so to find the p-value in a problem, you must be given the test stat and you must be given the alternative hypothesis. They didn't give us the alternative hypothesis, but they have given us the claim, and from the claim we can figure out what HA is. Okay, let's start with that first one there, number one. First thing we want to do is determine if it's a left tail test, right tail test, or two tail test. So when I look at that uh, claim, I see that it says the mean is less than 36. So that's going to tell me that it's a left tailed test. The reason why I know that is because this symbol is a symbol that we would use in HA. And if that's a symbol for HA, that means this is the alternative hypothesis. And when it's less than, it means left tailed. So at that point, I know for sure that it's a left tailed test. The next thing I need to do is to draw the bell curve then. And on that bell curve, I'm going to label my test stat, right? So label your test stat. Your test stat is negative 2.13. So we're going to put the test stat on the curve where it belongs, right? So negative 2.13 is going to be over here on the left-hand side. Negative 2.13. All right, now... The reason why we wanted to know whether it was a left tail test, a right tail test, or a two tail test is that determines how we find our p-value. The rule is pretty simple to remember. If it's a left tail test, you find the area to the left of the test statistic, right? Find the area to the left of the test statistic. Note, even if the test stat was on this side of the curve, we still find the area to the left of the test statistic, right? It doesn't matter which side the test stat is on, right? It could be on the left side or the right side. For a left tail test, we find the area to the left of the test statistic. So in this case, we're going to find the area to the left of minus 2.13. In other words, we're looking for this area. If we can get that area, that's our p-value. Well, to find that area, all we have to do is go to our z table, look up negative 2.13. We'll get the area from here to here, right? And then from there, we'll do the 50% of the curve, 0.5 minus this area, and we'll be left with the area in the tail, which is our p-value. Okay, so what we have to do next is go to the curve, the z-curve, and look up minus 2.13 on our z-table. Okay, so we're looking up 2.13 on our z-table. Let's scroll down till we get to 2.1. Okay, so there's our 2.1 row, and we see that 2.13 gives us 0.4834. Okay, so we found the area here to be 0.4834. So now we have to do 0.5 minus that area to get the area here in the tail. So 0.5 minus 0.4834. All right, a little old school borrowing here. That'll be 6, 6, one zero. So the area in the tail is 1.66%. That means the p-value is equal to 0 0.0166 or 1.66%.